Hi, Genki Call here. It is Merlantis week, and it is time to talk about what we've got in the Soul Forge. So, first, I need to say that today only we've got a weapon in the Soul Forge that is available because of the faction assault. Um, however, if you can afford to get this with gems, I recommend coming into the faction assault, even if you don't like doing them and using your gems to get it. The Writhing Staff is quite a nice weapon. I enjoy it myself. Um, I would not spend diamonds on it because I have plenty of gems for one, but also because, um, because diamonds are harder to come by than gems. So let me show you the upgrades for the Writhing Staff really quickly. We've got Attack, Life, Magic, Attack, Magic, Gain 2 Attack, Drain 3 Mana from the first enemy, Submerge Myself, and steal one magic from the first enemy. So if you're interested in the writhing staff, you can get it here in the delve for like 400 gems, I think is what it is total. Or you can go into the soul forge and you can get it here. Let me pull that up for you. The writhing staff costs 200 gems plus these resources. As far as other weapons in here go, eh, you know, they don't look amazing. The trident, these ones that cost 75 gems, they remove gems with no effect whatsoever. Double damage to Merlantis enemies. It just These weapons, I don't love them. I'm not at the point where I'm buying them to upgrade my kingdoms. Um, Amber Partisan. Um, six blue and green gems. And so we've got blue and green. And then with the Iron Wave, we've got blue and brown. So let's go into the Merlantis troops and see how these would work out. I already have it pre-sorted to Merlantis. So most of them use blue. So let's look at green for the one weapon. So, yeah. No, I would not do the blue and green one at this point. Oh, let's see. Wait. Let me see my unowned. Okay, they both use green. So I guess if you have an Aquaticus team, then... It might be worth crafting the one that does blue and green. Otherwise, Nia, yeah, I would pass on that. Absolutely, I am going to pass on that. Even if I had Aquaticus, I would not be interested. As far as the other weapon goes with the blue and the brown, these are the only troops that use brown. So, unless you're planning on running a team that is your weapon and three deep kings maybe deep king is an awesome truth that's absolutely true but right now i mean i'm not interested myself in crafting i think there are other weapons better able to support the team so i personally am not going to go for that um as either so let me get this set back up for my usual base where oops i want to save that save yeah Rarity, base rarity, save filter. Okay. All right, so let's get back here into the Soul Forge and uh, we'll go back to weapons and I will reiterate Iron Wave. It's a maybe. Amber Partisan, absolutely not interested. Trident, not interested. And these others are, okay, Nature Staff. Nature Staff could be interesting and for 75 gems, I would consider it maybe um, it creates a leaf storm if you start with a if you start with a class that starts you off with a leaf storm and you're using leprechaun to get lots of green mana fast you can keep a persistent leaf storm with this and do double damage every time you cast with it again I think there are better weapons out there and the point the number one point I want to make on these weapons in here for Merlantis is that we can't use any of them in the in the world event. They have to have blue and none of these use blue. None of them. So the only reason that you would craft one of these this week is if you decided you wanted to use it for the uh, class event. So I've got a solid pass on all of these for now. Maybe when Merlantis comes back around I might change my mind but for now it's a pass. On the troops, on the mythics, we're going to skip right over the legendaries and go straight to the mythics. These are what we've got. The world breaker. 
he explodes a flat 18 gems so whether or not he has been webbed or not he will still explode 18 gems and get you some nice mana and then he does some scatter damage not it's not scatter damage it's damage to all enemies and I I don't have the world breaker I have never used him I myself am not would not be interested in crafting him um, I have guild mates that have used him and had fun with him during e events but only during events I never hear about anybody using the the world breaker just on a day-to-day -day basis gargantor I don't have either but I gotta say he looks pretty crappy he's got a boost ratio of 15 for anything that's been killed but yeah just does not look interesting to me at all he's a pass for me as well so we have two more in here for this week they are Vash Dagon and Pan I own both of them I use both of them Vash Dagon I like to use him in Delves so devour an ally then summon a demon if the ally is devoured so if you're casting on someone that's barriered if you're casting on someone that is immune like he is he's impervious he can't be devoured um, if they're immune um, or if they're blessed you cannot devour in those three instances unless they get cursed or stunned stunned in the case of the trait or cursed or, or blood um, cursed or stunned right right so then you can devour them so what I use Vash Dagon for is to when I take him in a delve I use him for this third trait so he curses a random enemy when matching brown and therefore anyone on the other team that is impervious to devour uh, is going to be able to be eaten by High King Iron Gut. That is what I use him for. I do use him for cleanup. He does some, a little bit of true damage, which is nice. I just cast him on himself. As long as he's not cursed or stunned himself, I cast it on him, then I am deathless for my delve. And I will show you that team in just a little bit. Um, also, cursing will remove any positive status effects the other team has so if they're submerged they'll no longer be submerged that is very nice if they're barriered that goes away any positive status effects the other team has goes away with this uh, so Vash Dagon I like him a lot I use him all the time would I craft him that depends on where you are in the game um there are much better mythics out there that you might want to save your 4,000 uh, diamonds for. So that is going to leave that in your court. It all depends on where you are in the game. Pan is another one that I really like a lot. I have heard other YouTube YouTubers saying, oh, he sucks, but I like him. I like Pan. So he does 73 damage to three random enemies and knocks them to the back. Um, so he'll mess up the order in which the other team is in, which can really mess with the synergy of their team. This is what I like about him. All wild folk allies gain one life and magic when matching four or more gems. Uh, again, whether you craft this or not, that is depends on you and where you are in the game and what mythics you want the most. Don't spend your diamonds, your hard-earned diamonds, on something you might like wait for something that you know you really like that is my advice to you so now i'm going to show you my pan team i love my pan team let's go into pvp here and see if i can i don't know that it's going to do well oh no orb weaver life and death and arachne weaver ah uh, no thanks we'll try it with glaceon oh they've got essence of evil which is going to suck but that's okay let me grab my team here i shoved it into this slot this is not my favorite b team um, I just put it in here. I forgot to change the class, however. We want the class to be Bard. And the reason is because our hero will then be a Wild Folk. That thing is so ugly. <laughs> ah, wild Folk. So, the entire team is now Wild Folk. We've got the, the hero, as I just mentioned. 
Queen Bee Trix, Trix is a wild folk and she's going to be creating tons of match fours for us. And also she cleanses on match fours, which is nice. Queen Bee is one of my favorite troops. Pan is going to give us, with all those match fours, he's going to give us an extra life and magic, making everyone, especially Queen Beatrix, hit harder. King Selenus is only here for his 50% wild folk mana start. Um, you know, I might use him as a finisher, but for the most part, Queen Beatrix is going to be my go-to here. And let's get started. We're going to try it here. I don't like this team at all. So we may lose. But um, hopefully I'll be able to show you how well this can work. And of course, as always, I will post the team codes in the description box below for both of the teams that I will be using. So we've got, we don't want Glaceon at the front here. Reduce damage from skulls by 65%. Of course, I don't really want the hero at the front either. <laughs> no! Alright, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to match yellow. I'm going to use Pan right off the bat. No, I'm not. I'm going to use... No, mm, no, we're going to use Queen Bee. I don't want to take any chances. Uh, I forgot to show you. Oh, look, we're up to 101 damage just from that one cast. One more match four, we're up to 103 damage. And with Queen Bee tricks, we're up to 114. I love this team because it's awesome. Will I cast with it right now? I'm not taking any chances with their um, Essence of Evil over here, so no, I'm not going to. Oh, look. Kapow! Kapow! Ah! <laughs> All right, and look, I can't hit the hero because the hero is submerged. It would be a good time to have that, um, have that curse with me, huh? All right, I am going to... Not enough green on the board for the Essence of Evil, so I'm gonna cast with Pan. <laughs> Do I cast with King Salinas? No, eh, not really. I'm going to look for some mana... Well, shucks. Not a whole lot of choices here. We'll go ahead and cast. And we'll take some brown. Too bad I don't have my hero anymore. Uh, that Glaceon took me right out. I want some... Oh, yeah. There we go. They took out Pan. That's okay. I took that right off of there with Queen Bee. Yay! Royal Honey! Okay, so let's get this going again. And do I have a match for? I do not. Okay, we'll do this. And we'll finish off with Pan because Queen Beatrix cannot hit the hero. So, doink, doink. Whoop, whoop. Let's see what else we've got here in the PvP. Maybe something that's not Orb Weaver. Or Lust Team. Oh. Eh. That's okay. So you, you can see the gist of what we've got going on with this team. Now I'm going to head into the Underworld. I'm going to show you my Vash Dagon team. Uh, am I doing it here? Sure. Uh, no. <laughs> Hold on. Where am I going to do this? Uh... Where, where shall I use my team? Wait, I've got to use the Vash Dagon team. I should have looked. Where am I using the Vash Dagon team? I am using it pretty sure here in Alithia. Let's see. Yep, there we go. All right, so we've got Mountain Crusher, High King, Iron Gut, Queen Beatrix once again, and Vash Dagon. So High King Iron Gut, in case you don't know, he does damage, a little bit of damage. He will devour them if his 70, I've got 78% chance at this point to devour. With High King Iron Gut, he does miss sometimes. He cannot, um, well, you know what? Let's find one that is immune to devour. Hey, I bet you there's one here. I bet you there's one here. Let's see. I don't have all of them 
uh, all of the ones immune to devour um, memorized at this point. Wait, let me see. Nope, that one's not. That one's not. Come on. Give me something immune. Hold out. In I don't think any of them are immune to devour. Uh, let's see. Kruarg? Yes. Perfect. Let's do this one. I hate fighting Kruarg because he can devour me every time he hits with skulls. He has a chance to devour me. And I don't like that. But... Oh, and the board is not... Com not being good to me either. I would have liked to have that brown. Uh, let's see. I guess I'm doing purple. Taking the skulls simply so that he does not have a chance to devour me. I don't have my my um, my shield up. I'm using Titan, which gives me barrier whenever I match brown. Oh, frickin' cockatrice. Alright, I have to get some match fours, and Queen Beatrix creates lots of match fours for me, but first I have to get her up and running. There we go! Alright, so, oh look, Kruarg is already, already, um, he's already cursed. That's what this purple is, and that is from matching brown. Yay! But now I've got to get <laughs> High King Iron Gut back up so that I can show you. Plenty of brown on the board for hiking iron gut. Oh, come on. Yellow. There we go. Oh, there we go. The... Stop it. The curse is back up, so now I can take my hiking iron gut and miss with my 78% chance to hit. I didn't not devour because of the immunity here, impervious. He is cursed. It just happened to be a mess. 78% chance to hit and I missed. Ugh. So rude. Alright. Let's do that again. He's still cursed. Let's try again. There we go. Whoop whoop. So that is why I take Vash Dagon. Um, it's, I have other troops that can do the same thing. And that is something to consider when you're thinking about crafting um, Vash Dagon. Is that there are other troops that can, ca that can curse without casting. Um, that aren't mythics even. Um, number one I can think of in my mind it would be... Um, oh my goodness, I was just using him a few minutes ago. Uh, doggone it. I'll, I'll pull it up for you in a minute. Stupid cockatrice. You're going next. You're going down. Alright. And then at this point, I could use Bash Dagon to take out this last troop by casting on himself. Um, but whoever gets the mana first, that's what we're going to do. Oh, no. I'll go ahead and show you this. So we'll go ahead and cast on himself. He can't devour himself unless he is cursed or stunned. So, that is my Bash Dagon team. Um, that other troop I was thinking of that can curse on... <sighs> Curse without casting is... Ah. Onk Newman. Onk Newman is a legendary, but um, there are there are ones that can do that. So that will wrap it up for my Soul Forge uh, recommendations for this week. As always, I leave the ball in your court. I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.